Action. Subject so Naja banned out, really strong picks there. They're gonna first pick Thor, which is really since Naja's banned out, that's a pretty strong pick. We might have gone for the same thing since we have two picks afterwards. Uh, and that mean we, it means we don't have to pick up our jungler now. I mean they have their jungler, so there's no reason for us to go for it. We're gonna go for Athena and then Hell. Jerby likes going solo lane hell. We have our support tank now. Uh, this guy called mid Dias Pitar. Uh, so I'll probably going for a ranged physical or um, a jungle. I can jangle. So let's let, let your team always let your team know what you're planning on playing. I don't, you know, you can't go into rank game and expect not to speak. Um, the most annoying people are going to be the the people that go into rank games. And they don't talk. They don't speak to anybody. They don't, you know, explain anything to anyone. They don't try to do anything um, to. Uh, to like let their team know what they're planning on playing and how they're planning on playing it. Um, so what we can do, they took the Thor away, which is expected, especially since Naja's banned off the table. So what we can do is we can go for a Hoon Bots. Um, so we'll see uh, how that works out. I mean, it's going to be a pretty easy lineup for us. Hell's not going to be in the middle lane, most likely going to be in the solo lane. There's going to be Agni. So now we just need a range physical, and since they have the Apollo, there's no reason for us to pick up a range physical until our last pick. Um, you know, this is something that just, it, it's basic band draft um, strategy. If your enemy locks in a roll, um, now you have to be careful about this. You don't want to say, you know, people like Hercules is a locked in roll, because Hercules can play jungle, he can play solo, you can even play him mid. Uh, you have to be careful with those versatile characters. Characters, but there are some characters like Apollo, where no matter what, he's always going to be playing ranged physical carry. Poseidon, they can play him solo, but generally doesn't. If you look at a character like an Isis, Isis can be solo or can be mid. Uh, Hell as well, Hell can do that. So he's going to go for a Cupid here, um, just because. Look at the enemy team. We have uh, a few escapes, um, just some though. The teleports come out from the Thor and the Loki would be fine. Bacchus and Apollo would have tough time dealing with that. On her and Neath were still on the table. I actually probably would have preferred a Neath here, but again, it just comes down to what they're they're um, planning on playing. Looks like Optics wanted to get a Cupid this time, so personal preference there. And Optics is a fantastic player, so I'm not going to take that away from him. If he wants to play a Cupid, that is a great choice. And Cupid um, is probably the most underrated range, range physical carry in Smite right now. I wouldn't say that uh, any other range physical carry is as strong as he is while also being um, as, you know, less sought after than him. I mean, no one really wants Cupid, but he's very strong. Especially with the new slow that comes out from his Heart Bomb. You see the Heart Bomb out, it lands on the target, slowing them. and also has, of course, uh, the two damage sources plus the stun. Um, if you go for a little bit of attack speed early on, you can easily uh, get a lot of stuns out. So as far as the lane setup goes, it's going to be Hell in the solo lane, Athena and uh, Cupid in the long lane, and then or Hell, yeah, Hell in the, the solo lane, the short lane, um, and then uh, Cupid and Athena in the long lane, myself in the jungle, and then we're going to have Agni in the middle lane. For the enemy team, we are going to be have Poseidon in the uh, middle lane. They're going to have a solo Loki, a jungle Thor, and then Apollo Bye. and Bacchus in the side lane. I'm actually going to go for two healing potions because I plan on uh, getting pretty aggressive here. You want to get out of the, uh, the well as fast as you possibly can in ranked. And this is actually an NA server, which is great. Uh, that means I won't have to do any, uh, deal with any ping issues. The first thing you want to do is group up with your team uh, towards the medium camps on either side of the middle lane. That's the first thing that you, any team will try to fight for is that early game experience in gold that's literally free. Uh, looks like they're going to be grouping up in the middle tower here. I'm going to do what I usually do, which is I go over to the side here. And I just kind of stand in this area so that I can spot out any um, you know invasions, aggressive placements or positioning from the enemy team. Uh, if you look at the, the position that my that my team is in, um, we'll see uh, you know if they can pick something off there. But again, the invasions are you know not super common, but they definitely are uh, very common. They do happen a lot. So something you have to be uh, wary of when you are. Um, you know, going into a ranked game is that you may be invaded coming from behind. Generally, invasions are not effective if they come from the front. You always want to come from behind when you're doing the uh, invasion. So if I stand here, I'll spot them if they come from the lane. I'll spot them if they come from here. Now, I'm not really covering too much in front of the Gold Fury Fire Giant area, depending on what side of your map you're on. We are on uh, the Gold Fury side. But that's fine because they'll be coming from the front that way. And as I previously stated, the uh, invasions from the front aren't really that effective unless you have an incredible, um, you know, offensive engagement like a Sobek or a Hercules or some kind of pull or a massive stun. Uh, Kronos is good at that as well. Uh, but since they don't have that, um, since Sobek was banned out, not only too worried. And there's an invasion from the side. Looks like that's going to hit, which is a little bit worrisome. Uh, but looks like that actually got prevented. The Whirlpool was already used by Poseidon. That was a side fling. You see how it really wasn't that effective? Um, looks like Poseidon actually got kind of low here. I'm gonna get some damage out on that. Be careful, don't want to really engage too far just yet. 
There's a kill here. And we're getting them skills. So you see how it didn't really work out with that well for them, and they got really clustered. It's really, you know, you have to be careful about uh, how you engage and what you do. So we got a really big pickup there for us. Uh, we're going to go ahead and clear out this side camp with the middle. Uh, Augie should be able to come over here and help me out with that. That's going to be a really big uh, lead for us in the beginning. Uh, as far as Hoombots goes, you want to go for the shortest animation hits. One, two, then hit. Uh, this will leverage your passive. Uh, you'll be able to heal up there. Uh, you can see how I picked up the two healing potions for this very reason. I expected a big invasion from us. Um, we have a pretty uh, aggressive lineup here. I might need some help with uh, the buffs, so I'm going to go ahead and head over there. Looks like Athena and Cupid are going to go do the buffs, so I may as well come over and get some experience in gold while they're doing that. I uh, don't really want to miss out too much. I mean, obviously, with that early uh, level engagement, so I didn't really want to worry with that business. I'm going to let Athena go first here if she's willing to tank it. One, two, then use the ability to smack the main minion with your passive. The passive allows you to do bonus damage on your next hit after using an ability. Wait five seconds. Hit that. There's a bounce. I'm going to do that. I'm going to pick up this damage buff just because it's here. And then we can probably come over and get the blue buff, which we can give to the Athena. I'm probably going to tank this one just for her, unless she wants to go in and take it. No, she's going to go ahead and take it. One, two hit. She's going to open hands of God's it, and then clear this out. And this is going to put me in a really good spot. So not only did we get the kills in the beginning, I actually got one of those kills as well. Cupid's going to pick that up there. I'm going to go clear out these side camps. Actually, we should be at the point where this uh, side camp in the middle should be respawning. I come uh, poke at the middle lane and wait for this to come out here. It should be spawning soon. Now, normally it's about between 140 and 155, and there it is. One, two, smack. Wait five seconds. Kind of needed uh, Poseidon to rotate a little bit quicker, but the problem with that is just Poseidon um, pushed the lane faster than the Agni, which is going to happen. Uh, Poseidon has a bit of a push advantage in the beginning up against an Agni, so we kind of had to deal with that situation. He's going to steal away some of that. Actually, I think he got both of them, unfortunately enough, but, you know, it's, it's going to happen. We're still ahead, it's not really uh, a big deal. We're gonna bounce that out, farm some of that business. I'm maxing out my two first, as you would on Hunbots. Uh, your fastest clear mechanic, as well as your damage output. The Sacred Monkey isn't too strong in damage, he only hits once, but it's definitely uh, a big benefit to you. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and clear out this. Actually, I'm gonna go help out Agni um, in that side camp. Totally forgot about that left one. They uh, spawn uh, intermittently, or offset like that. Looks like he's gonna go clear it out right away. I'm going to come over here. What I'm going to do is I'll clear out this basic camp here, and then I'm going to go to the blue buff. And then by the time I'm, I'm done with both of those, I will have uh, the ability to clear out the medium, uh, the movement speed camp and pick up that buff for myself. Pull this out. Heal myself up there. And I'm going to go over to the blue buff and give it to uh, Jerby here on Hell, which is pushing very effectively with Hell. Jerby seems to love that Hell play, and it's working out so well for him right now. So one, two, then I'm going to use my overhand smash. One, two, use the sacred monkey. Right I'm actually going to go ahead and smack this down. Augie's right so actually going to go for the kink in the right lane, but I think they're actually back right now. Yes. That's going to be for Hell. Hell's going to end up wanting to uh, take the that tower. This is really risky, so I wouldn't recommend this. This is actually going to be really close. To back off. Looks like he's not going to help me. Very low Loki there on the left side. I ended up clearing the side cap, which is fine. I'm going to go back and I pick up my uh, boots here. I'm going to pick up actually one health potion and we'll head back out. Uh, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Um, you kind of play it close to the vest. Uh, the early level jungle is, is pretty uh, efficient. Um, you have to be very close with your rotations. The right side middle lane has just respawned, so I'm going to go clear that out. Looks like the left one's about to respawn as well. So we're going to go clear these out, help out with the Agni. Um, I wrote, my uh, timings on these side camps have not been great, and I'm still learning the jungle. Still trying to learn that role. Looks like they just got cleared out. The right side might be as well. We can do. Poseidon's kind of low on mana. I don't know if he saw me or not. He may have. Uh, but we'll see if this is a good rotation. What I'm going to do is I'm just kind of run through here. Uh, I don't really want to waste too much time because I think he's already back. And indeed he is. He's going to head home. Not enough mana there. So we're going to go to this right side and we're going to actually clear this okay. out. It's going to get cleared out there. So the enemy Thor is doing pretty good. Eclipse team is a very good player. They have EMC as well, as well as Hero. It looks like they have wards. Looks like they have a lot of wards. Yeah, cancel that. 
Enemy missing right. They could be going for the blue buff here, and there they are. Enemy missing middle. So they definitely have wards. Pick up these hailing pots and then head back. So I wasted a lot of time with failed gangster. It's something I talk about when people ask about you know, how to get better at the jungle. Uh, right here you can see that I'm wasting a lot of time trying to clear things uh, when I don't really need to. And I'm wasting a lot of time trying to gank and if the, the gank fails you run to another lane and try and gank and the gank fails you try to run to another lane and try to gank and it fails. You're going to start falling behind. You're already at a, an experience deficit in general just by being a jungler. out and go for some of that looks like the Ogni actually got killed out in the middle lane it's something that happens up against an Ogni or up against a Poseidon it's one of those things that's just gonna happen regardless uh, Thorum actually may be coming in the middle lane and try and clear this out and I don't have my middles so this may be risky but we'll see if it's up if it's up we may be able to steal it I'm just gonna wait for him he's probably gonna end up going for it and I can cover the middle lane your middle tower is under attack <laughs> Make sure that tower doesn't take too much damage. Here is the hell. It's going to go after the Thor who was clearing out the side camp. The other side camp was clear. We're going to go to these side camps and clear these out. Right lane, they're fighting after Apollo and the Bacchus are doing well. As far as the gold goes, we're still up by a lot just because that left tower got cleared. Um, our uh, carry is farming well. And our early game was really strong. Now, obviously, if you go to your lane, there's a hell who got, you know, a huge amount of kills right off the bat. It's going to be tough. What I actually do is clear this out and give it to the Agni. I'm going to smack this down. Buffs on the ground. I won't be able to get it in time. It'll disappear before my buff wears off, so I won't be able to get it. Uh, so we can put that on the ground for whoever wants it. Uh, if nobody wants it, that's fine. Not really the biggest of deals. Now since I'm up against Poseidon, I will need to pick up a, a Aegis Amulet soon because I will be getting very aggressive uh, jumping and trying to get some kills. Um, if it's to the point where you know I have to dive in hard, I will need that Aegis Amulet. So keeping that in mind is important. Um, this is heavily warded, and I know, is this a sentry ward? It's not, so okay. I'm not really in a good spot here to offensive jungle. Looks like he might have a ward here. See if he reacts or not. Uh, doesn't look like he does. Enemies have returned right! can't tell. So I'm going to go over here and try and get a gank here on the right lane. Apollo's not really going to matter target. He's going to just ult out. They actually might be able to get this kill. Or I might be able to. Very close. Just avoiding that cripple a bit. Before she comes back down. There's the kills on that one. Looks like that worked out pretty well. Um, you gotta just wiggle out, wait for the AoEs, uh, kind of come in, in and out of the team fight. Now, what I would expect from most players is the ability to uh, bob and weave. Um, this happened. This, you know, a good strategy for literally every character in the game except for tanks. EMCs here, so we're just gonna go ahead and back off. Uh, see if we can't uh, rotate from that. So we got uh, Agni clear in the middle lane. This side camp is pretty uh, available for us. Loki is here. Hell's coming around. We got this kind of business coming out. Loki's around. So Hell's gonna go back to the left lane. The tower is down. Thor's actually in this side of the jungle, so that's something to keep in mind. So Thor is on the left side of the jungle. And we're just gonna go ahead and head back and spend this money. Uh, I'm just going to go for a, uh, a void here. I can pick up the Aegis Amulet that I previously mentioned. And against this team, um, I might actually need a shell. They have a lot of burst damage and team fight presence. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, pick up two wards and a mana potion just so we have more vision. We're winning the early game, and the best way to continue your lead on the early game is number one, not to make too many mistakes, and number two, to have lots of vision. And really, since I'm buying just standard sentry wards and not the long duration wards, my goal is not specifically to have vision for us. It's more to take away the vision of the enemy team. That's really what I'm fighting for here. Be careful, right? They actually might be rotating here, I'd be careful about that. Right lane, looks like they're coming out. He's gonna throw a meteor for me. I'm gonna pick that that damage buff. 
Oh god, this camp. The side camp or the side camps in the middle should be respawning soon. Looks like we might have a tower ability to dive this tower actually. I'm gonna put a ward down on my way over. Let me make sure they don't have one here. Looks like they don't. I'm gonna put one up closer, which is gonna catch up the Thor and the Poseidon. I'm just gonna get a ward. Looks like they kinda of Paul's gonna go up and actually go in. This is a great opportunity for us. Kill Poseidon's here, there's the ultimate, not really a big deal. And Augie's able to kill that easily. There's nothing he can do to get out of that. Just threw that out just in case, but an easy uh, kill there. So we're going to go ahead and go for the Gold Fury. We have Vision here. I don't know if this will clip. I don't think that will actually clear a, min or a, a war that's in front of the Gold Fury. I don't think it will. Kind of zone him out here so we can't deal with that. Do we have a hand of the gods? We do on the Athena. It's only tier one, but not really the biggest of deals there as it goes off. We've got this blue buff. Be right back. Nice job. See how that uh, passive from my uh, using an ability does a lot of damage there. We're going to clear out this blue buff and give it to whoever wants it. It's going to be there. I can clear out this wave for free experience. Nobody's here. The jungle is pretty much just farming and rotating and being very efficient with your time. If you're not quick, you're not, you know, there's no hustle in your step when you're playing jungle. You're not going to play jungle very effectively in Smite, in the current meta anyway. Uh, you have to be really, really efficient. You can see I'm not that efficient with my rotations. Obviously the kills and assists are helping out. 4, 0, and 6 is a big benefit to me. But it's not, you know, going to keep me uh, well farmed or high in experience. Audrey's doing really well to keep himself up. These uh, side camps should be responding now is what I can do. Just kind of force him back. He's going to smack me, but I care not for his business. Thor's up. I'm going to walk away from this uh, possible Poseidon ultimate. He's going to spread out. I mean, Thor's still up in the air. Kind of wait for him to come down here, if, wherever he decides to go. There's the dunk from the Thor. Paul's going to come in as well. We're going to wait for the rest of this to come out. There's a free kill on that. Gonna get the Athena dunk on the Apollo. Gonna back off here. Doesn't want to take too much damage. Just keep it ultimate. We're just gonna do a lot of damage here. There's a kill on the Apollo. Paul's dead now. Loki's here, but not only really too worried. We have good vision everywhere, so good rotations, good ultimates, good everything. I mean, the team is just doing so well right now. I'm gonna go ahead and clear this out. He's got a title surge, but I care not for his business, as previously stated. And we actually take this tower right now. There goes the minion wave. I, mean, I don't really want to get caught in this. Um, you see we're clustering up a lot. They don't really have a whole lot to defend it with. Uh, but they still have four people alive. Um, all their ultimates are down and Athena's zoning. So I think it's safe now. Uh, but generally you don't want to just kind of blindly walk into uh, clusters with your team. You'll get caught out very easily. And that's just you know positioning and team fight 101. This tower actually could be pressured here. It's like this camp is down. And the damage buff is as well. We can keep pressuring this. I have my ult up in 25 seconds, which means the Poseidon ultimate is going to be coming in just about the same amount of time. Hoonbots and Poseidon have a similar cooldown on their ultimate, and he used his before mine, so his should be coming up soon. We're just going to back off here because everyone's alive. We got a tower. We got two kills out of that. That's going to be easy pickups for us. Um, we have the Cupid on our team, and Cupid's probably going to go for some penetration, what I can do. Um, he's actually going to get pretty farmed. I'm going to go for the regular Void Blade just for him, um, and then after that we can go for the Jotuns. We're going to go ahead and pick up, let's see what we can pick up here. We're going to have a lot of damage there. I'm actually just going to go for the Shell just for my team. We'll get two wards of that and a single ward and we'll head out. Then we have great vision. I have the Shell, and I'm going to go for the Shell and the Aegis Hammond. And basically what I'm going to do, since we're so far ahead right now, we're up a good amount of gold and experience, is I'm just going to look for opportunities to pop the Shell and Aegis Hammond and keep my team alive. Because if you look at the enemy team, you have a Poseidon, Apollo, Loki, Thor. Uh, those those three specifically, Loki, Thor, and Poseidon, are burst characters. They're the kind of characters that want to jump down, lose lots of cooldowns, and kill everyone. Uh, whereas if I go in with a shell and stop them from getting any kills, when their abilities are on cooldown, they're not really going to be able to teamfight us as well as they would like, especially against someone like, I mean, you can even uh, simple that, uh, simplify that subset a little bit more down to Loki and Poseidon. Loki and Poseidon are the kind of characters um, who just like to burst, and if they can't do it, they won't end up... Nice word. Um, they won't end up getting any kills. And we want to extend that team fight out. 
Paper Science probably has a ward there that I just walked through, just, uh, you know, judging by his adamancy to back off there. Hell might get caught out. I'm going to wait. Looks like he's going to be okay. Actually, Loki's going to be out there. I actually blink into that, unfortunately. There's the shell. Apollo dunks in. I'm going to go ahead and jump over the wall here. And there's the hearts. They're actually going to surrender. So pretty, I mean, that wasn't really too surprising to anybody, I don't think. I mean, a very, very uh, active game for us. We played very well. Everyone did their job. Uh, it came down to the early game engagement. Uh, just that, you know, level one in the jungle uh, really benefited us a lot. I mean, that was a huge engagement for us. Uh, overall, a lot of damage done. First win of the day. We're going to go ahead and GG well played on that one. Um, and just, you know, hopefully that helps you out um, in understanding the importance of the early levels, um, especially around those harpy camps in the middle lane, as well as, you know, hopefully uh, understanding the jungle a little bit more. Uh, my rotations were not not perfect, but they were good. Um, my, my rotations were just good. Um, they weren't anything special, but I mean, it's just, it, it shows the fundamentals of how you jungle. And I'll probably start playing more jungle so I can learn it and you can learn it along with me. And um, hopefully uh, you uh, gain a lot from that game. Looking at itemization, nothing really too surprising here. Um, a pretty sta safe build here from help uh, with the cooldown reduction as well as the, the cap cooldown reduction on these. Uh, standard jungle build, um, early game stacking on them for Cupid because we can get such great farm. We saw a Doom Orb on the Agni. Sovereignty for the Athena, you don't generally have to finish your gr Greaves, you don't get a whole lot from the last tier of it. We saw two Heart Seekers, on the, actually three Heart Seekers and a Doom Orb on the enemy team. And this is probably one of the biggest contributing factors of why they couldn't come back into the game. Because four of their players started with a stacking on them that lost stacks on death, and we were slaughtering them in the early game. So, I mean, if you have three Heart Seekers and a, uh, yes, you can see in chat, the Snowball in this game. Um, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, I don't know if he means like Power Creep or what. Uh, but you can see that the Doom Orb and three Heart Seekers, when you're playing from behind, you're going to have a way, way hard time doing it. And it's a tough uh, game to play if you have to deal with that. So, hopefully you enjoyed this game, and uh, I will see you in my next game.